but the real word is courtesy c-o-u-r-t-e-s i mean t-e-y sorry c-o-u-r-t-e-s-y s-y sorry t-e-s-y t-e-s-y now the reason why we want to speak about this because the real meaning of courtesy is uh showing polite behavior when when we talk about it polite being polite having a very good uh, behavior now that's what we want to talk about and we are going to talk about it for three months everybody look up and concentrate now the reason is this hear me the anointing of god can open a door for you in fact can open multiple doors for you but it is your character that will determine if you will enjoy that door that the anointing has opened now a lot of people have, have gone up by the anointing but has not been able to stay up because of their character i i a lot of people i'm more young when you're a lot of anointing now that's why you know i've been telling you briefly at times i will say ah, courtesy you know you will say courtesy demand that uh, uh, you should know what to do an adult should not be sitting uh, standing while you are sitting all these things like that so today in this service we will look at some now we we'll look at some parts next month we we'll look at another one that's why it's a family topic amen i didn't hear your amen it's a family topic that everybody should learn from i have seen people who had been driven out of places of honor because they didn't act according to courtesy. They didn't act according to it at all. Now, in Yoruba land, we can call it, you know, that from within, you know how to think to behave right. So many Christians don't have it. We got born again, we speak in tongues, and we stop there. I always say it. When you get born again, allow the word of God to form your habit. Now, that's why we preach. We are not preaching just to make you excited, you know, feel happy, oh, and shout. No, we are preaching so that the word of God will mold you to meet up to God's plans in your life. So, courtesy is all about polite behavior. Courtesy is what? All about polite behavior we can also use words like well-mannered you know as a way of explaining the word courtesy we we'll say ah, the person is well-mannered ah, ah, you know just like one that the late uh bimbo pastor bimbo decoy of blessed memory you know shared with us many years ago i watched this message on nta over many many years ago in timon's songs to be 20 years ago this lady was going to Yaba, uh, uh, Lagos State University, sorry, you know, and she boarded the bus. And right there in the bus, you know, in those days, it was days of Molue bus. How many of you know what they call Molue? Big bus. This uh, luxurious, it's not even luxurious, but we can call it a uh, uh, lorry, yes. Now, and this lady was seated when an elderly woman came into the bus. They, are not, they were not related in any way, not related, they were not family members. And you know, when you board a mole in those days, you can sit or stand. Now, once the seat is filled up, you take your standing and you hold one uh, iron. You know, I'm only explaining because those abroad may not understand mole in Nigeria. I don't know what they call it abroad. Just put, you know, everything abroad is S, put mole in abroad. So they hold the iron. And when this woman saw that an adult was standing, she paid for her fare. Now, she was seated she stood up and said mommy that's in in uh in english um ma'am you know please come and take your seat ah the woman was shocked that do we still have people that are well mannered like this we are paying for the same thing and she's trying to inconvenience herself because she has respect for me now follow my message and lo and behold she stood up the woman sat down now, and you know, being a young person, when they got to the junction, she got down and left. Not knowing that where she was going was where the woman was going. Pastor Bimbo shared it with us. She got to the VC's office. She came for admission into the institution. And uh, while she was waiting for the VC, people were there to see him. The mama came in. 
and saw her again. The lady stood up and greeted her. Mommy, a customer, you know, you know, and the mama walked in. As people saw her, they were greeted, you're welcome, you're welcome. And they opened the office of the VC, not knowing that that was the VC's mother. She entered and was talking to her son, and all of a sudden they came to call the girl. It was not yet her turn. Now, and when the girl entered, what happened? He said, my son said she wants to see the well-mannered girl that stood up for her in a bus for her to see it. And she said, ah, yes, ma, yes, sir, this is me, sir. What did you come for? What did you come to see? He said, I came to process my admission. Bring your documents. I will put you on the visa's list. Beloved, when you are well-mannered, doors will open for you. Where you are well mannered, hear me, you will last wherever you enter. Let's look at scriptures to confirm this before we go deeper into our teaching for today. Let's look at King David. Why David enjoyed a lot of favor. First Samuel chapter 18 and verse 5. We'll stand up to read that first one before we begin to read the others. First Samuel chapter 18 and verse 5. Let's be on our feet in honor of God's word. Is the first one we are reading. Manas, manas, manas. Courtesy. Very important. Can we read together after the count of uh, three? One, two, and let's read. And David went out whatsoever Saul sent him and behaved himself. How wisely was that? Courtesy. Well mannered, only book baby be to your bar so luba baron law be belly new own for manche. He behaved himself wisely. Let's read it on. And Saul set him over the men of war, and he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servant. Wait for me, please be seated. Let's do some explanation. And David, no, 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 I need a scripture, please. Thank you. And David went out, whatsoever Saul sent him, and behaved himself wisely. Now listen, because he behaved himself wisely, look at it. Saul set him above the men of war. Can you see that if you are well-mannered, you will enjoy promotion? If you are well-mannered, what will you enjoy? Promotion. People will accept you. They will want to put you in good places. There are some people, wait, hold on with that scripture. There are some people that are not promoted today because they don't have manners. Some don't know how to talk. Some don't know how to behave. Some don't know how, how to dress. Manners has to do with not only talking, not only behaving. It also has to do with your dressing. Some cannot stay at the top because they are not talking, oh. It's not their dressing, but their body language. Their reaction is very rude. Have you seen Christians like that before? I have seen even pastors that are very rude. That's why doors will open, but they themselves will close it by their character. The Bible says, and Saul set him over the men of war. He didn't stop, and he was accepted. Look at it. In the sight of all the people. Wow. The king loved him. The people accepted him. Why will the people not accept him when he has good character? Some Christians are here, tongue speaking. You and your neighbors are not in good terms. You have more enemy than friends. Your next door neighbor is a witch. The one behind is a wizard. The one by beside is a herbalist. The next one is what again, mommy? What you have given name to all your neighbors because you don't have good character. Don't be angry, but it is the word of God that we are looking at. But look at David, a well-mannered man. He was a well-mannered person who will be accepted anywhere. Let's read on. Let's read on. Where am I? Set yes, in the sight of all, and also in the sight of Saul's servants. I want to see your guy. David the Bible only want to fair. You should ask why. The Bible says he behaved himself how? Wisely. Now, let's look at four more scriptures before we begin to take the, all this court sitting one after the other. One more scripture. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 14. After it, you show me verse 30. Then we jump again to some, okay? Verse 14 and 15. Look at this. And David behaved himself wisely, how, where? In all his ways 
and the Lord was with him. She said, Otoniki e niwa. Otoniki olor otuwa pelwe niya. He behaved himself wisely in all his ways. And what happened? And the Lord was with him. Even God loved him because he behaved himself wisely. We are going somewhere. Verse 15. Verse 15. Verse 15. Wherever, sorry, where, where, wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, what happened? He was afraid of him. Why was he afraid? Ah, it's a well-mannered person. Ah, ah. He became afraid of him. Now jump again now to the next one. Verse 30. Verse 30. I'm showing you why David was exceptional. Verse 30. Then the prince of the Philistines went forth, and it came to pass, after they went forth, that David behaved himself out again more wisely than all the servants of Saul so that his name sorry so that his name was much set by people started talking about him I, I remember one day I went to minister in a church it was a big meeting and senior ministers were there and the moment I came up to take the mic listen there are ministers who had been in ministry before I was born I had to acknowledge all of them as my fathers I acknowledge them you know, in, in occasions, you will see that a respectable person will come up and say, I'm standing on every existing protocols. Have you had it before? Yes. It means I respect everyone that is in the meeting that is a, is a respectable pers personality. That's what it means. Standing on protocols means I, I, res I recognize every one of you as authorities and I appreciate you. Now, even our president, former president, Obasanjo, if you listen to his speech, when he came to declare open the roads that our governor, Sheimakide, did. Now, when Sheimakide came up, you know, His Excellency, the governor came up to introduce people as Obasanjo came. He said, I don't want to repeat what the governor have done. I'm standing on the existing protocols. You know, wow, I said, this man is a man of honor. Open your eyes, don't sleep this time. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. So, as I acknowledge them or listen there was this particular man of god god said be careful of him don't let him touch your head you know god have spoken wisdom look cool don't let him touch your head yes sir i preached god moved and the man of god came and took the mic you know what he said he said fire lele he no lele i want to run she alone until alone to lori ah my boy my boy jacking boy lori ah lord you said i should not allow him to touch my head set up ah, how do i do it you know what i did i dipped my hand into my pocket i got brought out some cash i just lie down on his feet and put it at his feet and i was i just put my head down i laid down there and he said ah ah oh my listen you must be wise so many destiny carriers cannot get to their destination because of foolishness david behaved himself yeah man wisely wisely in such a way that the bible says look at his name was set was much set now let's go on look at more two more scriptures in daniel chapter 6 3 and 4 we read that one too in the in our service at the elevator church this morning then after it we read mark 7 37 daniel chapter 6 look at this then this daniel was preferred why above the president and princes because an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm but verse 4 is where i'm going verse 4 is where i'm going Verse 4, then the president and princes sought to find occasion against him. Do you think if the devil will come against you, he will just come like the devil spiritually? No. Many years ago, okay, I won't mention his name. This man of God, we hosted him, a very big man of God in Nigeria. Let me mention his name so you can learn. It's Reverend G.F. Oyo. He came to our church. He said there was this battle that came into his life. Ah, how? He said he his secretary. That was working in his office. One man would just come and sit down with the secretary and be talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and talking. And talking 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 and talking
He, he said one day he just came out and told the man, hello, Mr. Ma, Mr. Ma, what are you doing in this office? Please get out of my office. He said, the man said, you will see. They exchange what? The man said, you will see. He said, if, if, that was how sickness started. The sickness was so serious. He said, when they were now praying for his, he got that prayer warrior. God said, the devil got him because he crossed the boundary. Ah, what's the boundary? He said, the man you talk to is not your staff. You don't know that the devil looks for loopholes. He said, you will have rebuked your staff for him to rebuke the man. He said, the man is not your staff. The highest you can do is to terminate your appointment with that staff. If he does not want to tell the person to stop coming to your office. The battle we are fighting requires a lot of intelligence. That's why you need to learn how to... The bat, look at the look for fault. Where were they looking for? The, how can we get this Daniel? How can we get this Daniel? Look at it. The Bible says... Where am I? Verse 4. Yes. What happened? Hmm? Oh, I thought somebody. <laughs> then the president <laughs> and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But what happened? But they could find none occasion, no fault. What the devil is looking for to bring us down is fault. Hey. Let's take one more scripture before I begin to show you the aspect I want to go to today. Mark chapter 7, verse 37. Look at Jesus himself. Jesus, in, 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 our Lord, was a man of character. Listen, and we're beyond mayor, astonished, saying, He had done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Look at, he has what? Done all things well. You know, when I was preparing this message, my spirit was telling me, did I do wrong to this person? Did I not do wrong? And what was that? I've not seen this person for, for about 10 years. He lives abroad. He now came to Nigeria. You know, he hasn't come. He sent somebody to come and give me a wristwatch. He, hasn't, he didn't speak to me. The last time we spoke together was over 10 years. I now said, okay, thank him for me. Help me appreciate him. I appreciate him. Then you can get his number for me. This person came to Nigeria and started telling people, Pastor is now proud. I sent something to him. He could not call or look for a way to come and say thank you. Now, I first thought I was wrong. Until when I was preparing this, God now said to me, son, if a person travel down to your country or send a gift without calling you, send the person that he sends, but cut the demand, send the person that he sends back. If he calls you, call him. If he does not call you, you are not wrong for not calling. He sent somebody to you. You have done right for sending the person back. I said, I didn't know. I thought if a person sent the gift to me, I should carry myself to go and say thank you. If you don't deem it fit to come. In those days when we were young, our fathers would say, if your wife deliver in Imo state, you travel to your in-law in Ibadan with a bottle of wine. But she budget you one thing. Show this of my bed, put it be more. I've opened one. Are you getting what I'm saying? I don't think you are here. There are two things that makes a person develop good character. Write them down and pay attention. Without these two things, you cannot have good character. Should I go on? The first one is what I call the law of honor. Honor system. If you don't have the attitude of honor, hear me, you cannot have good character. Now, what do I call the law of honor? Knowing how to respect people. That's the first one. Now, it's not until somebody gives you something. No, 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 no. You should know how to respect people based on who they are in Christ and who they are to you. Now, that's why you see in the Bible says, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long. 
So honor system is the first foundation. If you lose it, see, if you get a, to a point in your life where you don't count people as anything, you can't develop character. Honor is the base, baseline. That's why every parent that is here, the first thing you must teach your children from childhood is how to honor people. Now, number two thing that is a foundation for character development is when you have what we call the caring attitude. You, are, you, you care. That's, I can call it the law of love. Let's put the law of love. Now, what is the law of love? The law of love is when you put people in your own shoe. Which means, before you do anything, think about it. If, I'm, if they do it to me. The law of love is when you say, whatever I cannot accept, I should not give. Love and honor, they are the foundation that builds good character. If you get to a point in your life where you don't bloody care, you can't have character. Oh. Am I communicating? And without it, like I said, you can't last. See, Jesus our Lord, the Bible says he did all things. How? Well. So let's break it down. Let's now come to courtesy. When it comes to courtesy, the first one I'm talking about, courtesy, when it comes to the authority that you submit to. Number one, it is important you know that whoever pays the bills should make the rules. Take note of this. Whoever pays the bills should make the rules. Whoever is the one paying the bill. That's why I wrote here, it is wrong to be under somebody's paid employment and still want to do your own thing. Look at the law of hierarchy. The one that, anyone that is paying the bills, who is paying the bill in your place of work? Who is paying your salary? Is it not your boss? Courtesy demands that if your boss is paying your salary, listen, you cannot be under him and be doing your own different thing. Your boss says, let's get to work by eight. You are getting there by nine. Courtesy demands that he is paying the bills. Am I communicating? You should follow the rules. If you act contrary, you are disloyal. The same thing too should happen at home. If your husband is meeting the need, paying the bills, listen, he should enjoy your service. When I say service, I'm not saying you are serving him like a slave now. He should enjoy your service. What should the wife do for the man that pays the bills at home? The Bible says the man should submit, the woman should submit. These are little, little things that people don't know that is causing havoc. No, a minute of her shit, a minute of her sort of me. Ah, kill me, kill me. No, 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 no. Oh, God, me on the mass of. Oh, God. I wrote something here. Shagad Abaske. The loyalty is when you go against the ethics of the organization or individual you claim to submit to. This loyalty is when you go against the ethics of the organization. Or the individual you claim to submit to. Let me now tell you something that will offend you. A. A. It is wrong to pick up your call in the presence of your boss, in brackets, superior, without his permission. Sir? For me, for me. Look up, everybody. Oh, and what you a guy? Uh, hello, sir. Hello. Okay, I might be no. Hey, hold on. Hey, hold on. Oh, my sack here. Show me only one. Kilo it me like we call no what you want. It's wrong. Reverend Samson, I did some of it. I was in his office. We were talking about three or four years ago. You know what he said? He said, Pastor Prince, I have this principle. If I'm counseling somebody and he picks a call, that discussion ends. Once I am counseling somebody and his phone rings and he picks it, the discussion will end like that. Even keyboard is dark. Okay, God see. It's 
It's wrong. So many Christians don't know it. In fact, my own secretary here too. There are times I'm calling you be saying, hello, sir, Monique, I'm coming, sir. You got me, my call, my money, where am I kidding, you know? But it's wrong. It's ethically wrong. You know why I'm going to be teaching you this? Because you are going to higher places. Say amen to that. You are going to the top. You will get there. Can you pick your call in an embassy while you are in front of the consular? No, now. Why will you book a counseling session? Please, let somebody help Brother France. He is not concentrating. Children, should take the baby from him. He doesn't follow her to school. Oh, yeah? No, Michelle, go help me carry the baby. Concentrate. You are the man of the house. Now, what do you do at such times? You have a call. It's so important. You can say, sir, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Some bosses will even frown at it. Sir? It must not even ring. I didn't hear you. Say it loud. You will off your phone before you enter. Can you now imagine? Can you one you alone Salary ni boss and so me ti olorun lo wa nu okan o wa bring browse ni nu church ibaje salary at ti e mi ewo loju ejo sir o mi ba lo si da laye to ba fa pada be sure to fa o o o blow ni I was looking at a man in our church. I told the ushers, go and tell him to, he should stop what he's doing. You know what he did? He stood up and left. See, me, I've gotten to a point in, in my understanding with God that if you leave this church, eh, hear me, God has not left you. Yes, sir. I've come to that understanding. In fact, since when we got to that understanding, I discovered that God started blessing us. I will tell you the truth. You are not feeding me. I will tell you, even if you are feeding me, I will collect it. I will still do what? Tell you the truth. It's, it's ethically wrong. If it does not affect anything, uh -huh, just leave it. That's why I pray for all of you that did this one. They help us put this thing so that lights will always... There's a miracle they did here. God bless you all. Concentrate. Concentrate. Listen. Let's go to B. Okay, we are still in the A. What's A? L let me explain that A. It is wrong to pick your call, your, your, your call in the presence of your boss, superior, without permission. Some will even continue a call they were on when their boss needs their attention. For instance, your boss just called. Uh, Tochuku. I'm coming with your call. Sir. 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 You can go find out. I never stood in front of my mentor. Let's call it tomorrow. Once I see it, I'll just turn it, turn my phone off. I am saying it because my mentor may be watching me now. I have never picked a call in his presence. Once I'm going into a minister's conference, I put my phone in the car. Whoever is calling me, I will call back after I finish. You know why people are coming to church and their lives are not changing? They are not hearing God. Once your boss calls you, you can tell the person, I'll call you back. You know why? He that pays the bills makes the rules. B. In the office setting, listen to this, respect is determined by positional order, not by age, size, or possession. Should I come again? In the office setting, respect is determined by positional order not by age 
size or possessions. You know, some of you are fighting. Me shake me shake in the office setting. Shake the office. Your boss may be your junior. Only for the You know why so many Christians don't last at the top? I want KKK in you. A young man walked in, well, <laughs> living in an area, was working with a bank. And he, he had the audacity to even tell his, uh, uh, his boss. His boss said, Can't you even greet? He says, sir, gre- greet, greeting is not official, sir. I will tell you, me. <laughs> it's not official. And he kept saying, you didn't employ me, sir. I got my job from the, from the head office. He got to, He worked for some time. But when they needed to recommend, they said the, the company is having an issue, so they need to recommend that the, some staffs be reduced. <laughs> He was a good marketer, bringing clients. But he did. So that was what was making him feel the bank cannot do without me. He was shocked. When his name was among the list of the people that was sacked. Now listen. That's why whenever you enter anywhere, the first thing you must find out, what is the positional order of this organization? Find out first. What is the hierarchy system? Baonoshe to. Who is next to who? Let's look and see. Are you learning something at all? That's why under this B, hear me. I want to speak to every man here. I want to speak to every man here. Every husband, listen to me. Respect your in-laws. irrespective of their age. Do what? Respect your in-laws. Whoever is giving you a wife is giving you something very important, someone very important. If you are going to enter that family, you must learn to respect the order in that family. Some Christians, what is that? the Bible says, therefore, man will, he will leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. I will still get there. C. Let's go to C. It is a sign of disrespect for you to remain seated the moment your boss walks into your office. It is what? A sign of disrespect for you to remain seated when your boss walks into your office. Courtesy demand, you stand up whenever your boss walks into your office. It's a clear sign that you have respect for his or her authority. Now, I don't know, know if, you have, if you have finished writing. You will see that if you watch uh, some of these senior ministers, Pastor Paul Ineche, Bishop David Oedepo, whenever they are preaching and they come down and get close to any seat, you will see the people on that seat will do what? They will stand up. What that, does that mean? It shows that they respect his authority. Except he says, sit. Once your boss gets in, we are still looking at the authority figure. You stand up as a sign of, of respect. Irrespective of his age. We went to visit one of our members. He works with an NGO. His uh, boss is a white man. But he has been saying, sir, please, we want you to come, come and pray. You know, so I and my wife, we went. Let's go and pray for him. We heard he has been strong. We drove to his office. They ushered us. Very executive office. I didn't know that we have members that, uh, you know, because I, you know, I don't go around. So when we got to his office, they put on the AC and things like that. We're seated. We were talking to him. Yes, I was saying, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. And all of a sudden, his door just opened. He stood up. He stood up. Both of us stood up with him. Tony, for him to stand up, he's the owner of the office. We are visitors. We stood up with him. And he said, good afternoon, sir. You're welcome, sir. 
the man said good afternoon how are you mention his name he says sir this, uh, this, uh, this is my pastor and his wife who oh, he said oh man of god he has spoken so well about you oh you came to visit him i also heard he has been sick too okay okay sir we didn't sit until the boss left he now sat down he sat down too but you know some of you are the general overseer of the world some of you we are coming that's the reason some people don't get favor though when my mentor is coming up we are in the minister's conference he's coming to preach he's just coming to the altar we stand up as a sign of respect court seat demand it's a sign of respect. Some of you superior are here to know what you want to know. There are some people who don't shake their hands. If they give you their hands, you you bent, you are there. Tell me how to know how to shake how to shake. Me shake him into me, Leo. Me o shady. I'm teaching you the things that will make you go far, like David. You will go far. Yeah. I didn't hear you. Baba show no lewa sun church ni. Ego juso ke ke goro long. Ah, hey. Oh yeah, D. It is a sign of disrespect for you to put your hands into your pocket when you are being addressed by either your boss or an elder. It's wrong. What? We are talking about courtesy. Chama can you let be refu? What's the better thing so? Papa Ekowa, Ekowa, umu koi yo. Where should your hands be when you are talking to an elder? Put it behind you like this. A sign of respect. Now that you put your two hands on your pocket. Brother, I won't give you. Ask my wife, this uh, before her parents passed on. Me, would you worry? Her mom stays mostly in my house. And we are talking friends. Some of you are so rude that there's nobody you can't talk to. Whenever we have little misunderstanding, you know what her mom too will do? Her mom will be behind me, not behind her. Later, the mom will go and talk to her. I'm, I'm buying a home for you. If you have misunderstanding with your spouse and your mom is behind you, your, your mom wants to destroy your marriage. Hey, yeah, be no. Yeah, be no to that point. support your Because I don't know, you get that look of it. Look of it. <laughs> okay, are you confirming it? <laughs> uh, look at this choir. They have come, they have received bribe. <laughs> okay, you know, two more. Jesus is Lord. I'm not there. I'm not there. 
Now, go to E. Let me leave that of the in-laws. We'll get them next month. E. Chewing gum in the presence of a superior in a meeting is a clear sign of unseriousness. But the actual name is chewing gum. Now, I went to do a research on chewing gum. Listen. Why was it actually manufactured? It was manufactured for stroke patients. Patients. They use it to exercise the jaw. Here. I want to ban knee stroke. See one but if any stroke. I want to ban recover from stroke. Doctors recommend that they should be chewing it in order to exercise their jaw. Are you getting what I'm saying? So that the stroke will not affect them. Then if people are recovering from stroke. The recommender should be taking chewing gum in order to exercise so that they can come back. But do you know that chewing gum is bad for you? It's very bad for your teeth. But I'm not talking about health now. When you are chewing gum in a meeting, it's a clear sign you are not serious. Why will you be eating when something serious is going on? Four years ago, or five years ago, four years ago, I went for a meeting at Canaan Land. Bishop Oedeko had this conference for us. So I was feeling sleepy because once Bishop take over the mic, I'm a Bernice seven. Bishop won't stop until to 12. Because it better not land soon. I was, I felt like sleeping. So I said, let me even go around to the supermarkets to look for chewing gum. From one supermarket to another supermarket in the whole of Canaan land, there was not one. I now ask what happened. They said they don't chew gum here. It's a sign of unseriousness. Are you sick? No. Do you have stroke? No. Are you recovering from stroke? No. So let's begin to build ourselves, you know, as people that are going to the top. Now look at the kind of meetings our presidents and senators have. They can have meetings for us. That's where you are going. Amen. Only few cuts. I said that's where you are going. Now, if I told one shape day, 30 minutes, so what between gum colour? Tomorrow for four hours in go. <laughs> are you learning something? Where are we? F. F. There are certain words you shouldn't use, words, when you are in a conversation with either a superior or an elder. I've had some of you use words. I come again. There are certain words you shouldn't use when you are in a conversation with either a superior or an elder. You will borrow me some as I start with some. Let me start with this one. Words like, imagine you are talking to an elder, a superior, and you are telling him, hey, understand. Shall we continue something? Hey, understand. Ah, hey, understand. Engineer, hey, understand. Hey, uh, uh, you are talking to an adult, a superior, and you are telling them, hey, understand. You don't know that, see, 
That's why we used to say in our lang- in our tribe that Tomo de ba shekini to ba mo wo we a bag bagjeun. Sheri ki she inu egbe a wo ni kan na tin lo. I want to back on what you alone to bless. To your kid to buy more, Barney. One, one, beer in China. I made one mistake. Let me tell you this. Many years ago, uh, one of my fathers in faith, I respect this man of God so much. Those years, I still respect him till today. He, invi- he invited a minister to preach in his church, his friend. And I love the way the minister preached. I love the way he preached. And the way the minister, he guided the minister to his office, to the car, I didn't have access. So I used Thai to collect the number of the pastor. I called him to come and preach in our church. The pastor too misbehaved. He too was not supposed to accept like that. He accepted my, my call and came to preach. And this senior minister had it. Emma Gomeo. He invited me to his office. Pastor Prince Will, I want to see you. I got to his office. He said, I saw that you invited so so and so person. I said, Yes, sir. It may not seem more. Because when you are talking to an elder, you put your head down. Put my head down. Some of you, the to- elder is talking to you. You are looking at the eyeball to eyeball. Uh, it's rude. When elders are talking to you, you put your head down. So I put my head down. Where did you get his number? How did you know him? Did you know him ever before I invited him? I said, no, sir. Where did you know him? I said, at the last meeting you organized, sir. So you now believe that you are smart. You are to go behind. I'm telling you matter of about 20 years ago. Eh? That's before we got married. 20 something years ago, yes. Where did you get to know him? So you believe you are smart. I can see that God has not called you. You are nothing but just a, a smart, spoiled brat. I'm sorry, sir. I'm see, I can see that what you are looking for around me is nothing but a ladder to stand. I'm very sorry, sir. I don't, I don't believe that you have a, 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 a dot of God's call upon your life. He said so many things. A minimum jebi. Modern ti ya nla bagbe ni sonle o di don don kekere agori e gba to ti je ki ya nla gbe sonle ko si nto fe se kekere yen mi sha teri mi ba he abused me for like 30 minutes i was just saying i'm sorry sir i'm sorry sir he said get out of my office he's not my general overseer o general overseer le mi na o bo mo ba won loju ogun ni so I got out of his office and said, I said, I don't want to you. Leave here. Leave here now. I left. The second day, I went to his office. At the time that I used to be to the office, as I entered, I lay on the floor. Sir, I'm sorry for what happened yesterday. I didn't know how to tell you that I want him to come and bless us in our church. Please, I'm very, very sorry. I realized that I did what is wrong. I was there. He said, Prince Will, I said, sir, stand up. I stood up. He said, do you know that with what you have done, you have made me myself guilty. I overreacted yesterday. I'm sorry. Ah, He said, I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, Prince Will. I'm sorry. I said, no, sir. I was not supposed to go to him. I, he said, yes, I know that you did wrong, but you have realized you're wrong. All what I said to you yesterday, I was not supposed to say it. You are, listen, if you don't know how to work with elders, because where elders have entered, you need their connection to enter. And if you don't know how to work with them, they will block you and you may not go up for life. Touch that guy. He even sl- he's sleeping with an open mouth. <laughs> where are we? Where are we? F. So there are certain words that you don't use for elders. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? No matter how an elder is in Yoruba land here, we used to say, Ah, Kenny, Agbala, Bajabi, or Modi, Agbala, about checking Jabi, or Modi, no matter what, they will use for ways to cover it. And you know, some of you, you have this nature. Ah, consenting me, let's see. Ah, total bad delay. I just saw consenting me, let's see. I had to call one of my sons. I said, See, or a tone so clear, my co by two, but stop where. Woman, so car, sir, Papa, I mean, bell, you know, my sobo shiri, one of my pie. Ntofi bell, John the Baptist in here. A young bab or Yawa Brue. A wound here. You will do a lumber. Yes. And took by and took by any other negotiable problem. I should bed the Uriel Lama Vishabu. The Bible says wisdom is profitable to what? To direct. Let's go to G. Don't be offended with this one. Your smell is what determines the level of access you will enjoy in life. Your smell. It's part of courtesy. It's part of courtesy. Oh no, to banja de la re, oma oma kwe no ibiti wa ibiti wanti ma. Abi ado ibiti wanti boya oma teo kwe na oma le jina. Koma le soro kwa oma bumu. Oh was singlet le kon. You wanna go nowhere. Otu mu otu jala ro joki jotu otu mu. Otu sarik bewo. Oti wa boxer kufun for four five days. I'm telling you the truth. See, look up. When you are, when you, before you go out, do like this. You know what you are doing? So that your nose can perceive the odor of your mouth. Look up. There are times too. Bring your singlet out. That I can lay you down. Are you getting what I'm saying? Say courtesy. Okay, thank you. It's working. Your smell. What did Jacob as uh, J- Jacob came, he said, The smell is like the smell of my son uh, Esau. Some of you don't know, we set up a church that was when we started that Elebu church. We put a pastor there that time, many years ago, and we are poor tea they being by. One of the people I used to pray for now told me that, sir, I want all my staffs to be coming to your church. But can I meet your pastor? I now sent him, pastor, go and see Mrs. So so and so. A big woman. The woman called me and asked me a question. He said, Sir, is it bricklayers that you want to gather at the Elebu church? I said, I don't understand, man. He said, The body odor of your pastor is very annoying. <laughs> I'm telling you true life story. The pastor is no longer with us. So you not think it's apple? It's not apple. He said the body odor of your pastor is so annoying. As he walked into my office, pastor, I couldn't breathe. Some people are very sensitive to smell. Can you now imagine if he was going for a contract? Look at that contract that brother you lose. He said he's, he finished smoking when the call came in. It was Aliko Dangote's daughter. That needed they needed him. Somebody told them about marketing. 
So they now needed him. So Aliko Dangote doctor came to Ibadan. Let me meet him before we give him the contract. Some insider had linked him. The contract was for 9 million naira to start with. He said, Pastor, if I had, that contract was approved, my own profit is about 6 million. He said, because I'm going to be the one on the field. He said, when they now called him, he was busy smoking behind that Anglican church at Agbeni. And what he was saying, wow. As I entered into the car, he said, that car is like a conference room. The woman was facing me. He said, the first question the lady asked, do you smoke? He said, he couldn't answer. He said, if at this time of the day, you are smelling like this, I don't think you are fit for this job. Please get out of my car. That was the end. Some of you, your, sto- your socks, you don't use socks for more than one- once. Go wash it. You've, you've dipped your shoe into, into water. Or some of you, you sweat. When you get home, go dry it. You know, I enter everybody in there. <laughs> Can we take G again? Your smell is what determines the level of access you will enjoy in life. It is important you know that everybody can, sorry, not everybody can tolerate awful smell. Always do your best. To make sure you smell nice. Who are the cuts you? Uri L Latima stop. Where are we now? H. Okay. It is not polite to either be found chatting a married person or calling a married person at odd hours. It is not polite to either be found calling or chatting a married person at odd hours. It is disrespect to the spouse of such a person. Now listen, how can you be calling a married man? You are a female, you are calling a married man 11 p.m wrong ma one on she follow up it's wrong you don't call it there, there are odd hours there are times you should respect the the privacy of another person's husband or wife hello me okay i could see time till they call Even me that I'm your pastor, I cannot call you at certain times. Some of you will now spoil the whole thing. You are chatting with a, an opposite sex friend around 11, 10 30. It's disrespect to your spouse. Hello? Under it, so I wrote one. I want, I want us to rush it so that we can close at the desert. Any friend that does not respect your private hours should be avoided. It's still under age. Any friend that does not ex- respect your private hours should be avoided. I. It is wrong for you as a married man to admire a young woman in the presence of your wife. You are a married man. Your wife is beside you. And you see Dickness Olo is passing. Ah, baby, you are looking, you are looking kinky. Married man, and your wife is there. It's disrespect to your spouse. Or can I say, how will you feel if uh, let's say Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Ezella, please come. 
Go. Why are you laughing? I'm just calling you. You are laughing. Now, let's say you are with Evan. Evan, please come. You know their husband and wife. Can you imagine? Let Evan face the front. Don't look. Let your wife be said, and say, ah, Evan, Evan is calling his handsome. <laughs> ah, look at how handsome Evan is. Please. Look at his face. Look at his glass. <laughs> He's already vibrating. <laughs> you know why I had to do this illustration? Because it is mostly common to men. Women don't do it. You won't see a woman admire a man. But it is mostly it is men that will say, ah, look at that human hair. Yeah, <laughs> good, Charlie, don't mind it. So if you are married, appreciate only one woman. If you are, if you are married, the woman appreciates only your husband. That's why you had your young age to pray before you chose your partner. Once you have chosen, you, are, you have made up your mind, this is the person you want to marry, that's the only person you should appreciate. That's the only person you should admire. Let's rush through. J. This one is for the youth. You shouldn't visit, hear me, your fiance, your fiance's parents without a gift in your hands as a man. This is for the youth. Who fell lucky? I want put it down. Oh, be a person, no, and you be no, and take note. Oh, my more quack, oh, more and you know, I want to introduce GD. See, and who is GD? I want to get a mommy, Mokima, a Rama, and what did GD Joko put a moon conqua, a two hour wallet, a two terry, a two fulunje, or two hand long, mommy, I don't know. One happened in our area. Mama, I want to see the kitchen. I want to see me. If you want to see the kitchen, you can see the Because you can see last. You can see the kitchen. 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 <laughs> listen one thing about how two man will be here wa i want what lay i want dano listen to this i want dano i want your jail but on lawn ya ha if i don't want me so funny oh tony mommy won't change to me mobile yeah to occur to be want to bully one thing with tea i want to wash it here i want oh yeah can't want to say i want to call Tomo and Moa, take a tear lock, answer for crown, take a one tear lock, Kia won't be it. Only Batan by the Leon, one Wally, one being considered you, Batan, my he ting ting at the cook. One hour, one o'clock, one in me, so for a pound of people you bad. What's to leave one party, who say me? Our wawa, shin shin, and you cut it to stop one by Yah and Ira, Ira, Holy Spirit, or things so far, we can't stop. That marriage did not last. If the man values you, he will show it. Are you learning something at all? J. Oh, no, we have taken jail. K. It is not right to pick up the phone of your partner except with permission or of necessity. Courtesy demand that you don't act like you own your spouse. Should I come again? To run with jealous people. jealousy Can I even tell you this? Do you know that jealousy is a sign of insecurity? You are feeling that you don't want that person you marry. Your husband sleep. You quickly carry his. Where's my phone? You carry his phone. You are checking. Who are the people that call him? 
Who are the people that are calling? Who are the people that are calling? Who are the people that are calling? We are now beginning to call back. Hello? Hello? Who is happening? If you ever call him again, you will die. You will die. Thunder will kill you. I will, I will send my pastor. I will send your number to my pastor. My pastor will pray. You will die. Insecurity. You know people that does that? People that believe that they don't want the person they marry. That's why I see. Anybody you are about to get married to and you feel that you are not up to him, don't marry him. Every woman, marry a person that would like to fight for your love. A person that will be willing to die because of you. That's the person you should marry. That's the person that loves you. Not a person that you'll be feeling, ah, are, they, are you sure they are not going to take him from me? Take who? Where is the person they want to take? You will just die. Have you forgotten that one that happened in me? Was it not this year in Nigeria? She saw her husband with one man. Calabar, yes. She turned and drove and was chasing them. Had accidents and died. Otiku, Otiku. No, the man too died the following month. Because he was thinking. But what? That's why Fenty Okayema Balekwe was the problem. So, ethically, this thing is called, look up, handset. What is it called? Handset. Your handset is not supposed to be in the hands of another person. So, it is wrong when your spouse's phone rings and you pick it. Who are you? When you hear a woman's voice, I know you will not talk. In case you don't know, I'm his wife. I'm my wife. I'll be his wife. You will die in three days' time. <laughs> hey. You might drive his app out of destiny away, you know. And lastly, gratitude is the greatest habit that makes everything in life and marriage to work. What was the greatest gift? Attitude. I mean, gratitude. It's the greatest thing that makes everything in this life to work. And it's about money or not laughing. Develop a heart of gratitude. And you will see that things will work for you. Let's stop here for now. Are you blessed? Those that are angry are not clapping. So go and walk. Go and go, go and walk. Uh, you are still angry. Clap. Is the truth? You must hear it now. Ah. If they don't tell you uh, the truth in church, who should tell you the truth? Let's be on our feet. It's Thanksgiving time. Konika lukumutie.